Elisabetta Boella from Lancaster University, and um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our effort uh, on adding GPU support to our Plasma code, EPSIM, using OpenACC. Uh, this work has been performed in collaboration with Maria Elena Innocenti, who is um, online in the chat answering your questions, Matt Bettencourt, Moskan Kabiri Kime, Giovanni Lapenta, Pietro Parodi, Nitin Shukla, and Filippo Sfiga. All right, I mentioned plasma. So what is plasma? Plasma is the first state of matter, is basically an ionized gas. It exists in a wide range of uh, density and temperature, as we can see from this picture over here. For our research, we are mainly interested in, in space plasmas, like the solar wind, uh, these plasmas are peculiar. They have very low density and um, collisions among particles uh, at, um, are very, uh, happens very rarely. So these plasmas are basically collisionless. This means the particles interact mainly through the long range effect of the electromagnetic force. Uh, on top of that, we are usually interested in processes that happen on very small scale. So we are interested in the plasma microphysics. And to explore the plasma microphysics um, using uh, supercomputers, uh, we use uh, a technique called, called the particle in cell uh, technique. This is nothing else than a particle mesh uh, technique. So we represent our plasma through several computational particles uh, that represent an ensemble of real plasma particles or can be seen as blob of incompressible phase fluids moving in the phase space. These uh, particles uh, move, interact uh, through the um, electromagnetic forces that themselves um, pro produce. And uh, so these uh, electromagnetic forces um, derived from the electromagnetic fields that uh, we compute solving Maxwell equation on a fixed grid, where the source term of the Maxwell equation derives from the particles and the source term are basically computed depositing this particle on the grid. So in this slide, we can see a typical uh, loop of a particle in cell code, starting from the position uh, of the particle. Uh, we then, um, interpolate the particles to the grid to compute uh, the source term, as I said before, for Maxwell equation, in this case, uh, the current, and we call this part moment gathering. Um, once we get the uh, current, we then solve Ampere and Faraday's uh, equation to compute um, the electric and magnetic field on the grid. At the point, we um, interpolate back this electric and magnetic field to the position uh, of the particle to compute the force, the electromagnetic force acting on the particle. And with this force, we update the velocity of the particle and uh, their position. The peculiarity of Axim is that it adopts an implicit discretization uh, in time for particles and field equations. So we have implemented this algorithm in a code, which is written in uh, C, C++, is parallelized via MPI. Uh, the input output is done through HDF5 and H5 hat, and the, we use PETI to solve the field equation. As I said, uh, the um, Maxwell equation are, are discretized implicitly in time. Uh, implicitly in time. This means that we have um, a linear system to solve, and we use GMRS of PETI. XM is built via CMake, and it now includes OpenACC directive. Before including OpenACC directive, we, um, we try to understand what was the most uh, consuming part of our code. Uh, so uh, here I reported the timing for a, for a run uh, done um, with a grid size of 128 by 128 cells, uh, more than 6,000 particles per cell, which were pushed for around 600 uh, iterations. And we performed this run uh, with four MPI tasks and 32 MPI tasks. Um, I, want, I would like to notice that um, the uh, workload per processor is um, typical, this workload per processor is typical in our production run. So 
um, as we can see from this plot here, uh, most of the time is spent in the moment gathering, this green part. The code spent about 80% of its time in depositing particle on the grid and computing the, the current and the mass matrix which are needed for, the, for solving Maxwell equations. A big chunk of time is also taken by the I.O. This is not only the part where the code writes to disk. Actually, here we also uh, compute several diagnostics uh, that are then dumped to disk. Uh, and um, many of them involved again depositing the particle in the grid. So this is a sort of, a, of another moment gathering, if you want. And then um, the third uh, most consuming part of the code is the particle mover. Uh, we can see that when we use 32 MPI tasks, then the time uh, is reduced. And since our code scale fairly well on, on CPU, um, this is about one eighth of, of the time with four MPI tasks, but more or less the proportion between the different parts of the code are conserved. So um, we, um, of course, since the moment gathering is the most time consuming part of the code, we would like we wanted to uh, tackle this uh, to to port this part on uh, on GPU. But uh, we start actually from the particle mover because it was simpler. We had no prior prior experience with with GPU, so uh, porting the particle mover on GPU is uh, straightforward, and we started from there. The particle mover is composed of three uh, main uh, routines, update velocity, update position, and fixed position. Fixed position is only called uh, in 1D and 2D simulations and basically put the position of the particle to zero in the direction that are mo not modeled by the, um, by the simulation. So all these three routines are basically have basically a long for loop over all the particles and then a series of operations which are independent from each other. And so to port this to GPU is sufficient to add this uh, pragma SSD parallel loop on top of the of the for loop. We did that and then with the NSI system, we profile the, um, uh, the the three kernels. Here we have an example of the uh, profiling of update velocity. And um, we gain some time uh, by uh, floating this to GPU. But uh, when we went to, to look at the memory, uh, we saw all these red traces in, in, in the memory section. So these red traces are basically uh, page fault is when the GPU is waiting for data uh, from the memory as we learned yesterday in the tutorial. Um, we try to solve this by uh, using data clause, uh, but since our code is written in C++ and, and uh, made, makes an extensive usage of uh, classes and, and templates, uh, these, uh, the data classes didn't work. So meaning that the code was uh, crashing at compiler time. So we went around that and used the um, call as CUDA man prefetch async to prefetch data uh, to the GPU before um, doing calculations. So in this case, for instance, we are prefetching uh, the, um, the array containing the X position of, of the particle to the device before doing uh, the calculation on, on, on it. And then we have similar call to then move the data from the, um, from the uh, device to the host. And uh, when we did that, uh, we didn't gain much in performance whether all these red traces here uh, disappeared and become green. Uh, okay, after tackling the uh, particle mover, we then pass to the uh, moment gathering. So here, uh, the moment gathering is just a routine called compute moments. Uh, this, in this routine, there is again a long for loop over all the particles. And then inside this for loop, um, other subroutines are called uh, where the particles are deposited to the grid. Here I reported an example of such sub subroutine. This is the subroutine when, where the plasma density is computed. Uh, but um, we have similar routines for the uh, current and for the mass matrix. So as we can see here, um, we are going basically to add this weight, which is peculiar to each uh, particle, to, um, uh, uh, to a matrix, rho and s in this case, defined uh, on the grid. So to avoid race condition, 
uh, to avoid that threads try to write on the same position at the same time, we in this case we had to use uh, these uh, pragma CC atomic uh, update flows, and we have to use these also for the other um, quantity for for the current and for the mass matrix. We went on and we profiled this uh, this kernel using uh, inside compute. And uh, at the beginning, uh, when we look at the rooftop analysis, our kernel uh, was here, this point over here. Uh, so um, we uh, wanted to improve this kernel. And um, um, so also we looked at other, um, at other um, quantities in the uh, inside compute uh, profiler. And we noticed that um, uh, the, the original kernel, uh, only adding the OpenSCC pragma, this, this blue line, uh, had a lot of uh, stall long scoreboard where the, um, where the GPU was waiting for data. This is confirmed also by this, um, by this diagnostic here. We had a lot of uh, load from uh, generic memory, again, the blue line, and very few calculations. The input integer addition was very small. So uh, we try to increase data locality by unrolling loops, so bringing data closer to, uh, to the GPU. And by doing so, we move our kernel uh, here in the rooftop analysis toward the right, so we increase the number of computation. Of course, this is not ideal. We ideally would like to be closer to either this line or this line, but we are still working on it. At the same time, if we look at the stall long scoreboard, we, we manage to reduce uh, this number. We managed to reduce uh, the load from generic uh, memory. Uh, here we have to look at the green and the violet uh, line, which are two uh, slightly different implementation of the same uh, kernel compared to the blue line. And we managed to uh, increase uh, the number of computation. The, the three input integer addition in, increase, as we can see here, uh, comparing the green and the violet line to the um, blue line. Uh, so overall, uh, we managed to um, reduce the total execution time for, for, from more than 1,500 seconds to less to a bit less than uh, 1,500 seconds. Uh, we try to go further and enroll loops in the routine to increase data locality, but we did not we did not get any time improvement because we increased too much the number of registers. So we changed strategies and uh, we went through a fine tuning optimization of, of this kernel, uh, changing the order of the loop to assess basically uh, quantities in the array um, that are closer in, in, in memories and uh, reducing the number of uh, uh, if statements that were in the routines. And uh, in this way, we, we managed to speed up our routine. Uh, we got a 12% speed up, as we can see, here from this ANSYS profiling. Like if you look at the um, compute moment before this, um, the first time it's called before um, be, um, before the uh, this fine tuning of optimization, this was taking more than 500 milliseconds. And then after uh, the optimization, it took only about 450 seconds. Uh, so we were quite happy, and um, actually, this we think that this uh, this fine tuning optimization can be adopted also in the, G, in the on the CPU code. So we could also speed up um, with this the CPU code. Uh, after all this modification, we went on and we uh, reperformed re the same simulation that I showed you before on CPU. This time, using four GPU and four MPI tasks, uh, uh, a task for each. Uh, GPUs and uh, we looked at the timing and we could achieve a speed up of uh, five um, a five times speed up on Marconi 100 uh, in Cineca. This is this is to compare with 32 MPI task, which is a full node of uh, Marconi 100. If we then compare this with only four MPI tasks, the, the speed up is about 15. Uh, we also perform scaling of our application on Marconi 100, and um, we achieve a 72% efficiency up to 32 um, GPUs um, in strong scaling tests. 32 
those correspond on, of eight nodes on Marconi 100, then we had to increase the size of our problem because the efficiency was dropping. Uh, in weak scaling tests, we reached an efficiency of 80 percent up to 1024 GPUs, which are 128 uh, nodes on Marconi 100. So we are fairly happy about this result. We also um, run our application on different machines to compare performances on different machines. In particular, we, uh, besides Marconi 100, we run our application on Jules Booster and uh, Meluxina. This is interesting because these machines, have, have, um, besides having a different CPU architecture, uh, they have also newer GPU. They use uh, Ampere GPUs instead of uh, Volta GPUs. And with these newer um, GPUs, at the, we, um, the timing of, uh, for the moment gathering uh, portion of the code was reduced to basically half. We got also speed up for the particle mover, but that, uh, that is less uh, striking than for the moment gathering. And we think that this is due to the fact that uh, in the moment gathering, we, have, we make a large use of, um, of atomic operation, and the Ampere GPU can deal better with atomic uh, operation than Volta GPUs. So concluding, I show you that the most consuming portion of Eximum CPU is uh, the moment gathering, where particles are deposited onto the grid. About 80% of the code, of, uh, this takes about 80% of the execution time of the code. By offloading only particle routine to GPU, so the moment gathering and the um, particle mover, we achieve a, a speed up of 5x. And more importantly, the moment gathering uh, becomes comparable in time with the other um, block of the codes. Uh, Exim shows an efficiency of 80% in weak scaling tests up to 1024 GPUs. And as a next step, we would like to port also the field solver to uh, GPU. And this concludes my talk.